Uh, the team that I'm talking about today is affordable in terms of ADP, but I don't think stacking them gives you very much upside. And the reason is simple. When it comes to the Ravens, you cannot stack them because of Lamar Jackson. While it's entirely possible that Lamar Jackson takes a step forward in year two, it would need to be a massive step for him to be even considered a league average passer, right? Lamar Jackson started seven games last year, and in that span, he had more rush attempts than completions. He was getting sacked at the seventh highest rate in the NFL, and even when he did throw, his yards per attempt was super low. It was 7.1, which put him, you know, tied with Kirk Cousins for 24th in the league. His touchdown percentage, also low, 3.5%, which puts him beneath the likes of Eli Manning and right in that same tier as Blake Bortles and Marcus Mariota. And spoiler alert, this is not a tier that you want to be associated with if you're an NFL quarterback. It's just not. And despite all that, which, you know, on paper sounds pretty bad, you know, the Ravens went 6-1 and one in those games. And all indications out of Baltimore is that they plan to double down on what they believe is a winning formula. And it proved to be for them. You know, in terms of personnel, in the offseason, they added Mark Ingram and they lost their top two wide receivers from 2018 and John Brown and Michael Crabtree. The only addition that they made to their wide receiver corpse was Marquise Brown, who, you know, the Ravens selected in the first round, but he's currently recovering from injury. So say he does make it back by training camp or week one or the preseason, whatever it is. I don't know how good of a situation he's in. Because all stats aside, you can just watch Lamar Jackson's film from last year and you can see he is a long way off from being an NFL-ready passer. That was the report on him coming out of college and it proved to be true. I don't know why people are drafting Mark Andrews in the 10th round when you could just draft a full-time tight end like, I don't know, say Kyle Rudolph or Trey Burton even. Um, if you're going to take a tight end that's splitting time, why don't you take one in a good offense with a good passing quarterback like Dallas Goddard or Jack Doyle? So I say all this to say that Lamar Jackson has standalone value but not stackable value because you know when you look at Jackson by himself, he has a high rushing floor. He was the only QB in 17 weeks of DraftKings Millie making lineups to win the whole thing without being stacked with a pass catcher. So yes, he is absolutely a quarterback that you can draft, especially at his current price. He's going as the 17th quarterback off the board. So I'm not afraid to draft him, but there's little to no reason to try and stack him in the $3.5 million best ball tournament on draft.com.